So you're a little tired of Lake Malawi, or maybe you're not. Maybe you just want to set up a new tank, and that new tank just happens to be Lake Tanganyika. Maybe it's Trophius, maybe it's a community, or maybe it's Petrochromis, but whatever it is, you need to watch this video. So the idea for you is Lake Tanganyika. But if it's really Lake Tanganyika, then you have to understand that there are some differences when it comes to keeping these fish. It's not Malawi, it's not Mbuna, it's not Hapalochromis, and it sure as heck is not Alanakara. So take this message and these steps when you're starting a Lake Tanganyika tank. So let's say Trophius is your first choice. But when keeping Trophius, there's some things you need to understand. They're not a onesie and twosie type fish. What I mean by that is you're not going to buy three of them. If you don't already have an existing colony of Trophius, or whatever you want to call them, you're not adding one or two. You're going to buy all of them. So if you're starting a 75, I recommend you doing about 20 Trophius. Decent sized Trophius, all of the same species. So for instance, Trophius moray Kasenga red rainbow. 20 of them. But Jay, I don't just want trophies. I want other stuff too. This isn't Malawi, but I've got a couple options for you. Let's say you do want a 75 gallon trophies tank. Well, you can add Eremotis. Those are gobies. There is a vast array of them. The one I happen to like is the one that I have, and it's the Sinostictus. You've seen it before in my 75, and I would recommend probably about six of those. Six gobies, 20 Trophius in a 75, and you will be golden. Remember this rule. When you're setting up a tank with Trophius, you wanna keep the same rule. You want to overstock just like you would pseudo Trophius and Buna would be the same way that you do it with Trophius, uh, which are Trophius. So let's say you have a larger tank, not a 75 or a 90, but you have a six foot plus tank and you wanted to do something Trophius and something else. Well, there's a few options that will work, but you have to pay close attention. Yes, Eremotis will work, gobies. The other one that would work is a Petrochromis. Now, not all Petrochromis, but Travasse would work, and a Pipium, or a Pipium. Yeah, I can never pronounce it properly. But those are another Petrochromis that would work very well with Trophius. Now, there's another fish that you probably never heard of, that would work. They do get pretty big. They're not super colored, but they've got a completely different shape. And when you look at the aquarium, you'll know that this fish is not a trophia. And that fish is a Limnio tilapia dardinii, or dardini. It's a pretty cool fish. Do some research. All of the names should have appeared there. But Jay, I don't have a 75 gallon tank. I don't have a 90 gallon tank, and I don't even have space for a six foot tank. But I still wanna be a part of Lake Tanganyika. I still wanna keep those fish. Well, you're in luck because Lake Tanganyika is very diverse. Did you know that shell dwellers can be kept in a 15 gallon aquarium, overpopulate the shells, get yourself a breeding group, and enjoy? But I wanna keep big monsters, some crazy big fish. Then keep Petrochromis if you can find them, but note, Petrochromis are the devil. Mama said, Petrochromis are the devil. Six foot or larger, preferably larger, and get yourself some Petrochromis. Some of the more popular ones are Petrochromis species red, and they're widely known and pretty docile for Petrochromis, but don't let the word docile make you think that they're little babies and they're not gonna do anything bad. Other Petrochromis that you can look at are Petrochromis Moshi Yellow. However, that'll be a waste of money because within a week or two, they'll all have killed each other. Now we've pretty much cleaned up, except we don't really have a rock dwelling or a community or let's say a Tanganyikan reef tank. Well, what's up with that? Well, let's check that out. We have a 75 gallon community reef with some amazing tiger shark trucks. But here you don't have to worry about Trophius because they shouldn't be in here. And if you've watched previous videos, I explain why I'm doing it, but they are supposed to be coming out hopefully tomorrow evening. So really, you could do anything with Lake Tanganyika. When it comes to Tanganyika, there's a wide array of tank sizes and fish that you can enjoy. But when you're searching for these fish or you're going to purchase them from an online dealer, retailer, reseller, breeder, make sure that you're doing it right. Some of them will get into the mindset of I need to make some money and that's okay, but they also have to understand that fish are friends too and you're not gonna do the onesies and twosies. The only time you're gonna do the onesies and twosies is if they're a mating pair. 
So whether you're doing frontosa, cytotilapia, or you're doing trophius, or you're doing some sort of eremotus gobi, petrochromus, or some of the rock-dwelling compressiceps, whatever you're doing, remember, no onesies and twosies, twosies, twosies. So if you've got a massive tank for petrochromus, an eight-foot tank for trophius, beautiful five-foot tank for a Tanganyikan reef, or you just went all out and was trying to create like Tanganyika, or you've got a ton of 15 gallons laying around for shell dwellers, you can enjoy Lake Tanganyika. This isn't like Malawi. It requires a little bit more effort, a little bit more research, and a little bit more forethought, but the rewards are much superior than what you'll find in Lake Malawi. Predator haps may have been the thing, and while they're beautiful fish, Lake Tanganyika will take you to far greater depths. So let's recap with my tank in the background. Trophius, no onesies, twosies, or trios. You need to buy a whole colony. Unless you're adding to an existing colony, but be aware, Trophius can get nasty. If you're doing something that's six foot or larger, it will open the landscape of what you're capable of doing. That pushes you in into the, the Petrochromis, or uh, some of the Khaleesi, or if you're going even just larger in terms of your colony and you want to mix Trophius colony with some of the three that we talked about before, then that's where you would do it. But if you're restricted in your aquarium, maybe 15 gallon, 20 gallon size, look towards shell dwellers. But whatever size aquarium you have, you'll find that Lake Tanganyika will give you the reward that you're looking for. So when it comes down to it, you've got to do you. If you want to keep an aquarium with Lake Tanganyikan fish, do your research. Go out and buy your fish. Wherever you get your fish, that's up to you. But know that that aquarium is yours and you're the one that's viewing it. And yeah, we get to enjoy it sometimes, but more importantly, your family and you are building that tank together. So if you're happy, then it doesn't matter what the rest of us think. I hope you've gotten some information that will help you in your journey in this fish keeping hobby. And I hope that you'll leave a comment and let me know what you think about Lake Tanganyika and what your ideas are, what your thoughts are, or what space you have to work with. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, get notified, be awesome, and remember, smile, open a door, donate a dollar. It's not that hard. Somebody in front of you struggling, give them a couple bucks. It's not about the money, it's about the act. The act is far greater than the monetary value to them and to you. It's what we do when no one's looking that creates character. There's a lot of character being lost in today's world, and I'm leaving it up to you to find out who you are. Thank you so much for watching. You know what's next. Holla!